Um, today, guys, I want to give you guys a kind of a combination attack. And we're going to kind of cover um, not just chaining the two submissions together, but what would be your reason for going into this in the first place? You have a arming guillotine, and many times when we go into the arming guillotine, sometimes this can happen by accident where I'm down and somehow this arm accidentally gets stuck, okay, underneath. Maybe it happened to you, you were the person getting guillotine, and you're like, oh fuck, I can't get my arm out. Or you managed to lock a guillotine, and you're just like, oh yeah, they can't defend with that hand, this is awesome. Nice. But um, a lot of times, it can happen that your training partner's head slips out, and because the arm's already trapped, you're in a good position to start following up with the trying. Okay, so you guys can actually set this up, and there's two really good reasons why you would want to set this up. The triangle is the obvious one, but the second one, is the idea that you trap your training partner's defensive hand. When we're attacking from the back, for example, okay, let's say I have my training partner's back. One of the most common ways that we can get breakthroughs in this position is by going in and covering one of our training partner's hands. So we take away one of his defensive hands and that gives us a better ability to get a breakthrough down the line, okay, uh, when we're attacking the back. We could do the same thing with the guillotine. Okay, when we're attacking an army and guillotine from bottom position, regardless of how it happens, maybe he shot on me and I sprawl, we end up in some sort of front headlock scenario, and I'm here and I'm ready to start going in and attacking guillotine. Okay, from this position, the conventional way to go about locking it up, very safe way to go about getting to a good strong close guard finishing position with this guillotine, is that I stand up, and from here it's natural your training partner's gonna want to start grabbing the waist, tackling the legs, whatever the case is. And from here, we just pivot to an angle, so I'm somewhat side on to him. And now this leg comes over the top. Again, the intention here, and this is really smart, the reason why we do this is because when I throw this leg over the top, it makes it so that whether I get close guard or not, he can't jump across my body. Okay, and take side control. If I didn't do that, he would hop across, and now he defends from side control. So how are we gonna actually go in and start trapping the arm from here? Okay, this time we're gonna go a little bit more unconventional. And instead of throwing the right leg over, I'm gonna throw the left leg over first with the intention of chopping him right above the elbow. The reason why we're able to throw the left leg over first in this case is because one, we keep our training partner's hand on the floor. So if his hand was off the floor here, and maybe he was fighting my hands or whatever the case is, I would have to do something to put his hand back on the floor. I'd have to force his hand back down to the mat. Okay, maybe I would have to start looking to drag him back down. So maybe from here, if he starts fighting my hands, I start dragging him back down to get his hand back to the floor. And then now from here, we start standing up again. So I still, I never want to do this from directly in front of the guy. I still want to come around and take this angle on him. And now I lock everything tight. I make sure my hands and my chin are coming close so there's not a lot of space for him to get his head free. And I intend on taking my hamstring and the back of my knee right over his bicep. So I chop just above his elbow, make sure that I trap that whole arm in place. So from here, we take the angle, I sit in here. So I didn't throw the right leg over first, but it fell over quite naturally because I already had set up that initial angle. But I had the added benefit of when I lock the closed guard, when he goes to fight me with that second hand, it's completely trapped. Similar to how we do when we're on the back, okay? Um, and if you haven't seen my uh, back attack hand fighting video, you can check that out. I'll leave that link for, the, for that video in the description where we talk a lot about trapping hands and strategies to get better breakthroughs from the back, okay? But we have a similar concept happening right here with this guillotine. His arm is trapped. So when he tries to thumb post with the right hand, he can't. When he tries to fight my wrist, he can't. So we have the added benefit of one, taking away his defensive hand. And two, if for whatever reason, they feel like this guy's really, really tough, his head slips out, we're immediately in good position because that arm's trapped to go into a variety of different triangles. Whether we decide to go wrong way triangle, whether we decide to take a front triangle, whatever happens from here, we're in a very, very good triangle scenario. Maybe we'll talk about triangles on another day. But I want to give you guys the option of going in and using this arm and guillotine, trapping your training partner's main defensive hand, okay? And this is gonna give you guys a really, really good added benefit of higher likelihood of finishing because you take away that defensive hand, but you also end up with a really good triangle on your training partner.
hope you guys enjoyed that video. Uh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn on notifications. Don't forget about the dangerous rash guard giveaway. We're going to be announcing the winners at the end of the month. Subscribe to my channel, subscribe to the Future Kimonos, and leave a comment in the comment section below with the word giveaway and how you like to come back from losses. Um, and check out the rest of my content, instructional courses in the description below.